Let me first ask you before we get to the freighter that we want to talk about um, about about input costs and about the possibility of you passing costs on to customers. How have you seen inflation and how are you dealing with it? Well, first of all, uh, happy to be with you today. Um, we have uh, posted good results today, and um, I'd like to thank the teams for all what they have done. Now, when it comes to the customers and, and to your question, um, well, we are delivering from the backlog. So uh, we are in a situation where what we have negotiated with the customers was mainly about deferring the deliveries of the planes and not too much about uh, the price. The work on the cost has been really um, on our side uh, with our teams, with the suppliers, and with adapting to the new situation. And we see with uh, the numbers we have uh, released for the second quarter of the year that we have actually well adapted to the new environment we are operating in. But now there's a new phase in front of us as we start to ramp up again. So what, what is that phase? I mean, do you see continued inflation in terms of costs? And do you see, um, you know, sales continuing at the same pace? I noticed that you're looking at 600 um, for the full year. Uh, it seems like you could actually do a lot better than that. Are you being a little bit conservative there? Uh, with 600, we have actually already upgraded our guidance for the full year. Uh, the previous guidance that we had released in um, February earlier this year was for at least the same number as last year, which means at least 566. Now we're saying around 600 planes. It's a lot in this environment, uh, but we think uh, it's manageable, it's feasible, because we have already delivered 297 planes, which is actually a very strong first half of the year. Now you're right to point to the, uh, the cost situation. We see inflation uh, in many areas with uh, raw material, a very strong inflation on raw material. There is scarcity for a large number of, uh, of them. Uh, we see also a lot of inflation on logistic costs, sometimes skyrocketing uh, costs. And we saw also scarcity um, on some skills. Uh, after the period where we had to adapt the workforce to the pandemic situation, we are st now starting to hire again. And it's not always easy for us and for the supply chain. So it's a new period ahead of us. We start to ramp up again on the 320. That's good. There is demand. Uh, airlines are willing to take delivery of the planes again. Uh, but it's a very different environment, what we call the, the new normal. The post-19, COVID-19 situation is going to be different from uh, the pre-crisis situation. You know, I was talking to Herbert Dees a little bit earlier today, the CEO of Volkswagen, and he was saying that the supply chain issues, especially the chip shortage issues, may sort themselves out by Q4. Do you see a similar timeline? Actually, we've not been impacted too much uh, by uh, this uh, shortage in ships that um, has actually uh, been quite tough to manage for the automotive industry. So we, we've not been exactly in the same situation. Um, we fear the, the situation for the aerospace industry, where uh, the, the two big players um, are starting to ramp up again their production rates on the single aisle. Um, that's why we have communicated very proactively with the supply chain to give transparency, to give them the opportunity to anticipate uh, the situation of ramp up that we see um, on the A320 family and probably uh, similarly um, for our uh, main competitor on its uh, product in the single aisle. So we need to be prepared and we're working very actively with the supply chain uh, to help them being prepared to have the level of transparency, of information they need to do the investment and the recruitment that they need to make to enable that ramp up. You know, in terms of labor, you know, a lot of people think of Airbus as a, as a, as a very French company. I've been to um, some of your plants here in the U.S., so I realize it's very global. How difficult is it for you to get staffing back in um, to, 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 to help with your ramp up? Uh, indeed, uh, we're a European player um, and not a French one. We're really a European company. We are incorporated uh, in the Netherlands uh, with main activities in Germany, France, uh, UK, Spain. But we are not, uh, I call it, we are not a European Boeing as we have um, uh, activities, plants, operations uh, across the globe and a lot of operations uh, in the US. Uh, it comes with uh, complexities, in particular in times of COVID-19 and with all the travel restrictions. So it's not an easy um, setup. Uh, but it also drives performance as we have strong 
presence in the countries where we are operating, where we are selling. It creates proximity to the, to the customers. So we have some pros and cons and we are managing that complexity as good as we can. And we welcome the recovery of air travel and the reopening of the borders because for a company like Airbus that is really right. operating on a global scale, that's very important for us and for the customers we serve. But are you finding it difficult to add enough workers? It's, um, it's a concern. Um, there are a lot of places and particular skills where we find it difficult to recruit. Uh, again, in particular in uh, digital um, for uh, data scientists, data analysts, or also in the field of artificial intelligence, cyber. But that's not specific to Airbus. Uh, that's a bit uh, around the globe. And also when it comes to very specialized, what we call blue workers, people working on the shop floor that in aerospace need to be very skilled with their hands, but also very educated uh, as we are working in a high end um, uh, product, uh, complex environment. And we need people really uh, uh, skilled people. And that's what we like to uh, to recruit um, at Airbus and to develop. We develop those people as much as we can, but the pandemic has been a bit of a shockwave and now we are, we are recruiting again. Um, that's good, uh, but with more difficulties than we had in the past. And you've got new projects. You announced today you're going to pull the trigger on the A350 freighter. Everyone's been really excited about this story. What kind of uh, launch customers are you going to aim for here? Who, who, are you, who, who is this product for at the start? Well, this product um, benefits from the, the strengths of the A350 family that is today uh, the most modern airplane in the wide body segment um, with a very strong performance, uh, low operating cost, very high operational reliability and also a, a very low fuel burn. Uh, which comes with uh, very low carbon emissions. And we have seen new regulations kicking in that will make the existing products obsolete by the end of the decade. So the product really comes at the right moment uh, in terms of regulation, but also in terms of market needs, as we've seen an increase uh, in the demand for uh, transport by, by air, for the, the freight. Um, and at the moment where we will see a wave of replacement of the existing uh, plane. So we have around 2,000 uh, freighter flying around the world and we are tapping into that uh, market segment. Could Qatar be a launch customer for you? I know you've got a dispute there um, over paint issues. Is it still possible you could get them on the launch? I will not comment on the specific customers. We have a negotiation ongoing for the product and we will be more specific uh, when we will have concluded the, the negotiations. Uh, but obviously, uh, most if not all of the large um, operators of wide body freighters are interested by the uh, A350 freighter. All right, let's talk about the um, Air France KLM order, their negotiations with, with you and with Boeing for 160 jets. It's a big order. Can Airbus be competitive here? Do you think you have a chance? Of course we do. Of course we do. Um, and Air France KLM is a very important customer of Airbus. Historically, um, we uh, want to be competitive. There are a lot of ongoing uh, campaigns and negotiations. We won't be able to, to respond to everyone. So, but uh, obviously for Air France KLM, uh, we'll be competing uh, as uh, strongly as we can. And we will make sure we can offer the best solution uh, Airbus can propose to Air France KLM. And you have been competing very strongly uh, with Boeing. They haven't really been a, a very strong competitor of late, but it looks like they're making a comeback. Can you see a strengthening of that uh, competition after they posted a profit and, and look to be uh, stronger in terms of their finances? The competition between uh, Airbus and Boeing has always been uh, very fierce very strong to the benefit of the market. Um, the airlines and the lessors have always been very creative to make sure that this competition would stay active and it's on, the competition is on. We see indeed uh, our competitors very much willing to uh, win campaigns, to ramp up again their, their productions and uh, that's the world we're living in. It's a world of competition. At Airbus we enjoy that competition and we always try to bring the right products, the right services uh, to our customers so we can be competitive. 
but we know the other ones uh, try to do the same. So that's the nature of competition.